there, friends. How are y'all doing today? My name is Cole. Welcome to the Arizona Science Center's Facebook Live. Now, before we begin, just a quick reminder, we do do these Facebook Lives every single weekday at 1230. And this summer, actually, we're doing these Facebook Lives in conjuncture with our Camp Innovation that's going on right now. Now, this week at Camp Innovation, we are talking all about surviving in space. So our campers are doing activities ranging from learning how astronauts take care of their bodies in our space, how to properly ration food in space and things along those lines. So it only made sense today that we do a space themed activity. Now then, one of the biggest challenges that um, space engineers and astronauts and anyone working in the space flight industry have to deal with is figure out how to get their rockets and their ships in the right direction with the right speed and power. So there's been a ton of different thoughts on how to do this, right? There's a ton of different practical ways you can make your rocket go the right direction with the right amount of energy. However, there's one way that kind of gets sidelined a little bit. It doesn't get talked about as much. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Today we're gonna be talking all about the slingshot method now, if you all have heard of the slingshot method before, what I want you to do is just in the comment section below, go ahead and write down what you think the slingshot section or the slingshot method is. I'll give you all a second to do that. All right, all right. So the slingshot method essentially uses the gravitational force from nearby planetary bodies to, well, as the name, suggests slingshot the spacecraft in the right direction with much more energy now. Now then, we don't have a giant planetary body to mess around with for this demonstration, nor do we have the capability of creating a huge enough gravitational uh, force that we can move something on our own. However, because gravity is an invisible force that draws objects close to it, we can use a similar invisible force that draws objects together to demonstrate this theory and this, well, idea of space travel. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be using magnets. This is an activity you can also do at home if you want. All you need is a decently sized, strong magnet. I got this one right here. It's pretty good, pretty useful, pretty strong. You're gonna want one of these, you're gonna want Hypothetically, you only need one small metallic ball that's also magnetic, uh, but I suggest getting a ton because as I found out setting up for this activity, those little tiny metal balls are gonna go flying across the room and you're probably never gonna see them again. So make sure you have a decent amount of those. Uh, you're gonna want a ramp of some sort, so I just used a book and an index card. And also you're going to want a target. So the target for today's mission is this little orange ball over here. This is gonna be Mars. Uh, we humans have been trying to go to Mars, uh, send humans over to Mars for several, several years now. It's the next step in space travel, uh, right after our Artemis, Artemis mission that NASA is going to be uh, completing in 2024, where we are sending a few people up to the moon again. Um, so Mars is in the eye of every astronomer, every astrophysicist, and every astronaut, right? It's possibly an, another new home for humans. So that's why we're choosing Mars today. So I wanna send my little spacecraft, right? My little tiny metal ball from Earth, which is this marble over here, all the way over to Mars. And I'm gonna try and do it right now. It's just a straight shot. So let's see what happens. So we're gonna put it down the ramp. And I completely overshot Mars. My astronauts are now floating around in the void of space, not knowing how they're gonna get back home. That's like the last thing you want to do as an astrophysicist and as an astro engineer, right? You want to protect your astronauts at all costs. So what we're now going to do is we, as astrophysicists and as rocket scientists, are going to try and think, huh, well, is there any sort of large planet or large planetary body that we can use to help us get to where we need to go? And so just as it happens, there just so happens to be a very large uh, 
almost cylindrical planetary body that's already nearby Earth in this hypothetical situation. So I'm going to put this right down here, line it up the best I can. And now using this planetary force, uh, we're going to basically siphon off of its gravity. So the gravity from the planet is going to want to pull us in. But if we hit that angle just right, we should be able to get enough speed from that gravity pulling us in. Along with that, we should also be able to use that curve, uh, if we hit the angle correctly, to slingshot us around the planet, picking up speed and moving into the right trajectory to Mars. So fingers crossed for me. Let's see if I put down my markers in the right place, and let's see if we can send our astronauts all the way to Mars. All right, three, two, one. Oof, missed it that time. But it was definitely a little bit closer. Let me try moving this guy over just a little bit. Three, two, one. And just off a little bit, one more time. Unfortunately, astrophysics are incredibly complicated, but this is a fun way that you can do it at home. I say to you at home. So as you can tell, I wasn't able to perfectly hit that planet However, I was able to get closer, and I was able to use the gravitational force, or in this case, the magnetic force of this object to move my uh, rocket ship just a little bit closer to where it was supposed to go. So there you go, my friends. That is the slingshot method. It's a very advanced space travel technique that astronauts are now using. Um, if you like this video, stay tuned in for the rest of the week. Like I said, this week is our Camp Innovation Week 4, Surviving in Space. So this entire week of uh, Facebook Live videos are going to be themed around space travel. If you want to see more videos like this, leave some comments below. Let us know some science activities that we should do. And above all else, my friends, have a great day. Thank you so much. Don't forget to wear a mask, wash your hands, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.